Hey everyone, uh, we're going to do a quick rundown of the Axial SEX6 that I'm building and pretty much where it's at, what's on the bench and everything else I've got to show for it. It's got quite a bit of an update. So this is kind of a learning experience for all of us I feel like, um, particularly with me, I'm dealing with brands that I haven't normally dealt with, especially in the one tenth world. Um, but one lesson I have learned, which I failed to learn from last time, was Chinese parts and cheaper Chinese parts and options and things like that. So what I have here is a China SCX6 front axle um, that has been literally the bane of my existence. I should have just paid an extra hundred dollars and got a T, uh, you know, Trill or Vitavon. I know those are Chinese too, but you get what you pay for type of thing. Um, unfortunately, this thing is designed improperly. I have been in talks with the guy who I bought it from, basically told him over and over again, and if you watch my first video, uh, the upper link mount is just in the wrong spot, so I ended up making a custom link for that one just to make sure that everything fit you know, the way it was supposed to. I made it work. Well, I took it out and immediately I broke the uh, pan hard mount on the axle just sheared it completely off. I mean, it's just junk metal to be honest with you Not going to withstand a strong powered servo whatsoever So I knew that I was going to go to a four link and a servo on axle style So I went and got my g-speed same thing. I've got in the rear and uh, When I went to put it on if you can see it does not fit uh, and I thought and thought and thought, you know, why does this happen? Is there some kind of collision here? You know, some kind of rubbing? And that's when I started looking at my rear axle. Now, my rear axle is a stock axial SEX6 axle. Um, so, long story short, I've ordered a stock housing here. And I'll show you guys exactly which part is missing. I'll show you guys which part is missing for the housing to work. So this nice brace piece here uh, that we see is not on this guy. And what that has done, I can actually sit these two right on top of each other and you should be able to see that uh, the upper link mount is just completely in the wrong spot. It's just not, it's way too close. The link mount I, or the link I had to make was way too short. So the G-Speed also relies on the truss here. So that's why it doesn't work. Um, so that's why I've ordered a stock housing. Look at that. Works perfect. It's great. It's amazing what happens when you uh, kind of buy what you should. So a little bit of a hard lesson learned there. Um, but I will say this, the internals in my Chinese steel axle are good. Uh, diff cover is good. Knuckles are good. All those things are good. Just the housing itself is kind of crap. So uh, maybe I won't have to learn a hard lesson again with this front axle, but where it's at now, what I'm working on, is last time I took it out, I ended up, everything was great other than breaking the pan hard mount, so I really had trouble steering in the front. The front and rear steer, I'm actually going to go ahead and pick this up here. The front and rear steer on my 6 is actually awesome. Now, yes, I definitely have a dirty workbench and this is not the cleanest way to do this, but I pulled it off the chassis and my rear steer setup here, which is just the stock front axle, uh, actually is perfect. Uh, it really works. I'm, I'm really, really pleased. I'm not sponsored by uh, NSDRC. I've never used any of their stuff before, but this one has been really, really good for the six. Uh, I also use their horn that they recommend as well. Uh, it's been great. Really, really great. The only thing custom you have to do to make the G-Speed in this mount work is a custom uh, tie rod length right off there. So that was no big deal. Uh, all in all, really, really pleased with that servo. This servo is very, very fast and has plenty of torque. I know that the this is the V2, so if you have the V1, uh, there is definitely a difference. I went out wheeling with some guys that have the V1 and it is not the same for sure. Uh, I also have one of these bad boys for the front. If you can't see, it was mounted on the chassis. So now that we're going to servo on axle, um, I will have to make a custom link for this setup here to work. Uh, not a big deal, no problem. What I use to make those, a uh, little trial and error here. Uh, this is quarter inch threaded rod and it actually fits directly into the stock rod ends. Um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of work here and there and I've also got a few other things. So I went ahead and got me a package of CX-6 rod ends here. There's the part number if you need it. Um, and 
the steel pivot balls, which are not included. Um, you got to get those. I think all together that was like 20 bucks. So not a huge cost there, but definitely something to keep in mind. Um, another thing that happened is my stock gears in the back, my ring and pinion started chattering. You know, I didn't have to shim the diffs right off the rip from the factory. So I didn't, but they started giving me some problems. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those. I have my donor rear axle. The stock rear axle is actually right over there. Um, so I may pull gears out of that. I may pull gears out of here. I'm probably going to pull them out of here just to see how they look, to see if they're worth anything, um, and put these gears in the rear. And for the front, I actually picked up some uh, Vitavon overdrive gears. So my new front axle will have overdrive, which is awesome. Uh, I'm trying to think. So in terms of links, I did pick up some secondhand hardcore RC uh, high clearance links. You see they've just got a nice little bend in there. I got a good deal on these. So uh, thank you to my buddy who, who got these to me. I very much appreciate it. Uh, since then as well, I have also put in aluminum shock tower mounts which are kind of mitigated now that i have servo on axle you don't really have to worry about the shock tower mounts because uh, the reason you need aluminum ones is as the servo pushes against the chassis and against the axle uh, when it's mounted on the chassis you'll get some pushback on those on those towers so not a worry now but i do have the aluminum so i'm happy to have those uh, so that is what i'm working on in terms of the chassis, I actually have picked up some more tabs from RC Fab Tabs. Uh, I use these for the shock mounts uh, because they're they're pretty thick and they can be bored out and tapped for the appropriate size. And I use these for the panels. Um, so let's take a look over here at my chassis. If you can see, it's not the greatest welds in the world, not the greatest design, but it definitely gets the job done. Uh, I use these two big uh, holes here for the batteries and everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, the reason I'm going to add some more tabs is so that I can get the uh, interior to screw in so the hood and the interior down there, they can be separate pieces. Um, so small little fab works. The other thing that I'm super excited to talk about are my new tires. So for this round of upgrades, what I've chosen to do is I am really excited about the Proline Super Swampers. Obviously being an East Coast guy, this is kind of my jam. These are the tires to go to in, in the one-to-one -one world. And I've run them on a bunch of different rigs. I've got my short course car, my kid's car, my four seat bouncer over there, and I've got my race bouncer right there. So I'm excited to try these out. The compound feels good, feels nice and soft. It's what you would expect from Proline. And I've got them wrapped around some Vitavon wheels. Uh, this ex this setup is just expensive. Like it's just way more than I wanted to use, but I got one nice set to kind of see what they're like. Now, what came in the mail yesterday, which I'm super excited about, are my J Concept Tusks tires. Uh, they feel pretty good. I made a quick post on social media about them. Uh, a lot of people really love this tire in the one tenth scale, so I'm really curious to see for myself how it all kind of plays out. Uh, stock wheels, obviously, and uh, these these are pretty good uh, in terms of stickiness. The tread depth is way more shallow than the Pro Lines. Uh, they feel less like of a soft rubber. Um, they're going to probably roll over the tread a little bit more. Um, they're comparable, but kind of you know it's kind of one of those things. They feel different in your hand, but they're very similar in terms of uh, softness, uh, stickiness. But it does feel different. So these are both mounted. See if I can show you here, height-wise, uh, a little comparable. I would say the biggest thing, get a better grip on these two things sitting here together. The biggest thing is that the J concepts are more slightly narrow, and Proline definitely has them beat on tread depth. Let's see if I can get that to focus. So, all that good stuff um, looks good. I'm excited to try both. One thing to note is in my Proline Super Swampers, I'm running Steady Foams. Awesome, really excited. And in the J Concepts, I'm actually just going to run the stock foam here. It's very comparable uh, to the Steady Foam, um, albeit probably even stiffer than the Steady Foam. Uh, that's given it a pretty good push, and uh, I would definitely say that the Steady Foams are probably a little softer, but it makes sense for a tire with a little more meat to have a softer foam and a tire with less meat, less structure, less you know carcass to it to have a little bit of a harder foam. So that's the update. 
I am got a lot of, I have a lot of work to do. I've mounted all my tires and wheels. And uh, we've got some welding to do. We've got some, a lot of putting it back together. So y'all stay tuned. Uh, again, thanks for the follows. Thanks for the subscribes. Join us in our Discord if you're not already. And you can be the first to know about all this cool stuff. So uh, take away. These tires are cool. Chinese axles suck. And I've got a lot of parts to do. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.